There's nothing better when you get a video game that gradually increases the difficulty level so you're both satisfied and challenged at the same time. But sometimes a video game likes to throw a spanner in the works and just crank up the difficulty level, leaving players in tears. I'm Joe Hendry from What Culture Gaming, and this is seven brutally hard video game moments that came out of nowhere. In at number seven, Vice City Demolition Man. So here you need to destroy a construction site. No problem, we know the drill. You drive somewhere, you watch a cool cutscene, kill some people, go home, pay and spray, done, no problem, on to the next mission. But no, not this time. To blow up this construction site, you'll need to pilot a remote control helicopter and drop off the charges to the correct locations within a fairly strict time limit. Okay, we can just about deal with that, but not when you've got 45 builders chasing after your chopper with hammers and you can only take a few hits before your helicopter is completely destroyed. So this mission gets pretty frustrating pretty quickly. Number 6, Marble Zone from Sonic. I was in Primary 1 when I first played this game. Primary 1. This is, you know, kids are going to be playing this game. At least let us get through a couple of levels before you crush our soul, for God's sakes. Green Hill Zone lures you into a complete false sense of security before Marble Zone comes along and crushes you with spikes, burns you with lava every turn, and throws badniks in the most awkward of places. Marble Zone is just the worst, and it's level 2 in the game. However, you have to give some credit where credit is due when the developer realises the mistake and corrects it for the next time. Or no, how about we just have Chemical Plant Zone in Sonic 2? They just didn't learn their lesson. In at number 5, Aladdin The Escape. Aladdin is one of the greatest Mega Drive or Genesis games ever. It's fun, it's challenging, it's charming with great visuals and awesome mini games and a super fun combat system. It captures all the fun of the movie until, oh, oh god, here's some lava. Take some lava, Aladdin, enjoy some boulders that go faster than you, and also, you know that thing that you like to walk around on, you know, the ground? Yeah, let, let's go ahead and take that away as well. So if you do manage to make it through that, then you've got this horrific magic carpet section to try and escape, but we'll make you go at a thousand miles per hour, and because there's no widescreen, we'll give you about two nanoseconds to react to a nice boulder to the face. Oh, and Genie will give you directions, but you know, you know when you're driving and someone gives you really bad directions. Yeah, like that. It's a kid's game, people. A kid's game. To be fair, bitchin' soundtrack, though. Up next, it's the Water Temple from The Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time. This is super frustrating for a number of reasons. One, because when you're in the water, you're pretty much completely vulnerable and unable to defend yourself, but mainly because it's so easy to get lost in this underwater labyrinth, with many players getting lost for hours on end, not knowing if they've just reached a section that they've already been to. I'm certain that this moment in an otherwise flawless game has resulted in many a smashed controller. Kudos to Nintendo however, because in the 3DS remake they at least had the decency to leave coloured markers around so you know when you reach a section that you've already been to and you know where you're going. Well, well done Nintendo. Number 3 from GoldenEye007, Aztec. GoldenEye can be a pretty challenging game in its own right at the best of times, especially when you've completed the game on the dreaded 00 agent difficulty. You know, but when you achieve that, when you're basically 100% a game, can you give me a new character, or some new outfits, or some new guns, or just something like that, a nice little reward? No. Here the reward is the unbelievably difficult Aztec level, where the enemies are super fast, they're way smarter than they are in the rest of the game, and they're completely relentless in the pursuit of your blood. Not only do you have to deal with these super soldier guards, you'll also have to look forward to facing Jaws, who you can beat, but you're going to have to shoot him many, 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 many times. Your best hope here is taking out every single guard individually before you even think about approaching Jaws. God, thanks very much, Rare. Remind me to never complete one of your games again. Actually, wait, you've done this before, Rare, haven't you? You have done this before. You did it in our number two, Donkey Kong Country, Diddy Kong's Quest. 
Do you remember Donkey Kong Country? It was a fantastic performer for the SNES, and you know, I've got very few complaints, but one of the few suggestions is that it was perhaps just a little bit too easy compared to the likes of Mario, which was out at the time. Not a problem, said Rare. We have the answer. Donkey Kong Country 2, Diddy Kong's Quest. But we won't wait until you've 100%ed the game or anything like that. No, this time we'll dress up as a super fun mini game where you get to play as the animals. That sounds fun, doesn't it? How cute, how very cute. No. What you're in store for is moving through these environments at breakneck speed, dodging enemies and obstacles faster than your eyes and brain can process what you're seeing, using characters that you're not really that used to playing and, oh, and actually, you're going to have to get through five different sections with five different animals and let's make it the single longest level in the game. Oh, and also, just for laughs, let's make you navigate a parrot through harsh winds and spiky thorns to kill you all over the place. Thanks very much, Rare. You have excelled yourself in this list. But nothing compares to the horror of our number one driver for the PlayStation. And I'm going to admit something. You know, Marble Zone and Chemical Plant Zone really weren't the true problems in my childhood. The truth is, the reason I became so determined to become a champion wrestler is that so no one could make me feel as small and insignificant as the opening tutorial in Driver. This thing is ridiculous. It's at the very start of the game. Let's have a little section where we introduce you to the controls, right? Or how about, let's give you a massive list of stunts to do in a game that you've never played before, all within a 60 second time limit, and shall we make it fun with an open space to try things out and learn the mechanics of the game? Nah, let's put it in a confined space. How about a parking complex with nothing but one floor, pillars, parked cars, and the realization that you're never, ever getting out. To me, Driver felt more like a punishment from one of the Saw films than a fun stunt driving game. And the worst part is, it's right at the start of the game. I never got to play the actual game. Not once. I bought this game and I never got to play it. Worst thing to happen in a video game ever. <sighs> that was pretty tough to revisit some of that stuff. But I've been Joe Hendry for What Culture Gaming. We hope you've enjoyed this video. If you want to follow us on Twitter, please do so right here. Also, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. We'd love to see you back. Make sure you visit whatculture.com for all your favorite news, reviews, and features. Thank you so much for watching. We shall see you next time.